Hi everyone, welcome and in this video I want to take a look at Audio Imperia's new choir sample library called Chorus. To be honest I was pretty excited about this library from the moment when Audio Imperia released first demo snippets for Chorus. So I was really happy when Jan of Audio Imperia asked me to take a look at Chorus. So here we go. Okay so I prepared a little track here so let's listen to that first and then head into the details. So usually I do this different, I do this the other way around. So let's take care of the additional instruments first and then head into chorus. So on the first channel here, I have the full ensemble spiccato strings of Nucleus. This is also an Audio Imperia sample library, just in case if you don't know them. And um, it sounds like this. Sounds a tiny little bit like the window sound at the end. I also could have done some high strings here and maybe some at the top here. Sounds better. Okay, so next up we have a little a tremolo string patch here, also Nucleus. And uh, in combination with the staccato strings, it sounds like this. So just in case if you wonder why I don't use key switches, I don't like them. I like to have the full control over the staccato stuff and going into tremolo and also other articulations. I feel that I also have a little bit more freedom, especially when we come to the next track here, that is the low brass. Okay, so as for the low brass here, you can see I've used Talos and I've used the uh, sustained samples and the staccatissimo samples and I put the same... Uh, patches here on the same MIDI channel. So when I just play this line with both of these patches activated, it sounds like this. Juicy. Okay, so let's hop to the horns, the same here, Talos and uh, French horn sustain and staccatissimo combined. When I play it back, it sounds like this. Okay, so we're getting closer to chorus. Let's take a quick look at the trumpets here. Same deal, uh, but these trumpets are from Nucleus. It's the staccatissimo and the sustained samples again combined. And when I play it back, it sounds like this. Okay, so as for the percussion, I just want to combine them all. This is the Gran Casa Piatti, uh, the cymbals and the timpani hits and rolls all from Nucleus and it sounds like this. Okay, so it's chorus time. So what I used from chorus here for my little track are the energetic syllables. And we talk about some, not all of the articulations from the library and take a closer look at it uh, after we talked about this little track here. So I have used these energetic syllables and I also did the same for the men. And to be honest, I didn't change any of the syllables here. I didn't do any key switch arrangements and going through that list because honestly, I think the decision of how all the articulations or these, these syllables are arranged already by default sound that great. Uh, I felt like I didn't have to use anything else. So let's take a listen on the choir only. Okay. 
Okay, so just quickly here at this moment, I just have to say, wow, Audio Imperia, this sounds absolutely amazing. I mean, the patches obviously are called energetic syllables, but the samples in uh, the production or the patches in general really sound energetic. Uh, there is so much detail in there and it, it all doesn't sound blurry. Uh, it sounds alive. You hear all the details on, on the singers, but it's also... A very powerful ambience when it when it comes to an orchestral hall or a recording hall and i think that's pretty difficult to capture the right amount of detail and the right amo amount of of that powerful hall so let's listen to that once again here <laughs> Yes. Okay, so I want to quickly get into the processing side of things so that you are not uh, kind of like asking what what is going on? Did he change the sound or anything? So as for the choir, there is nothing going on besides a tiny little bit of compression. So let's turn on and off this um, opto compressor here for a second. And let me just play you the choir again. <laughs> Okay, so obviously also the choir is getting a little bit louder, but there is also a little bit of, you know, density happening. Uh, it, it sounds a little bit more intense when you put uh, compression on it. And to be honest, um, I find compression in modern productions, no matter if you're heading into a hybrid style or if you want to keep it, you know, kind of like traditional orchestra or puristic orchestral i think it's necessary to do to do the right amount of compression because it just helps the production unless you really want to go for some kind of like a deutsche grammophon recording where everything is really puristic just you know microphones in the room and that's it that sounds absolutely amazing too but um if you do kind of like a more modern production approach, compressing is really the key to everything. And of course, um, equalizing too. But as you can see here, I didn't do anything. Um, the same goes for the, for the brass here. I have some compression going on here. I also have a little bit of an orchestral hall going on. I used Altiverb, the Disney hall. I did the, uh, the mix a little bit more wet than I did for the strings. And uh, let's quickly listen to this. So just a little bit more balls. The same happens for the strings, except that I put a little bit of fresh air into this. You can use whatever, you know, exciter or something. Um, I think this sounds pretty good here. So let's listen to how this sounds. Also some compression going on and uh, Altiverb again, the Disney Hall, but a little bit less uh, dry wet mixing, so more dry signal. And uh, let's listen to this. Okay, so that's it. And also the same for the percussions, but for the percussions, I didn't use a hall because I find that percussive instruments already sound kind of like you know, reverbed enough when they are recorded in orchestral hall. Of course, it's a matter of taste. I don't like to put additional reverb onto them because it makes them too blurry. So I put a little bit of uh, compressor on here and uh, let me just play back the percussion here, percussions here. <laughs> Okay, so don't be uh, fooled by uh, that there is also a little bit of a jump in volume happening here. I should have put the output gain uh, lower than I did. But so basically everything is a little bit uh, higher in volume and I turned the instruments down a little bit. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. As for the mastering, I have a little bit of compression going on here. 
the drummer, uh, one of my favorite compressors. There's a little bit of uh, some compression going on. I also have Neutron in here. I, I'm not ashamed to say that. I just want to see how the track sounds when when Neutron, um, you know, analyzes it and uh, learning from from the adjustments the, of, and, and the EQ settings and everything. Uh, Besides that, I just have a little bit of uh, invisible limiter on here, and uh, it sounds like this, or it's just like 1.65 dB, and that's it. So there is rarely anything happening here. So you can see, just wanted to pay you a quick attention to this so you can see that there is no processing going on on this track or almost no com uh, 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 sound changing stuff like EQs or any you know, really hardcore tweaks or changes that alters the sound. Okay, so last but not least, let's pay some more attention to Chorus here and let's check what's inside the library. Okay, let's take a look at the instruments first here. We have multi-patches, we have single patches. Let's head right into the single patches here and open the main traditional articulations folder. And we have uh, legato intervals or legato patches uh, in all kinds of vowels. We also have legato hms, hms, or however you want to do it. Uh, then we have sustained and we also have staccatos. So let's open the legato Rs here for a second. And let's take a listen to how these sound. That's some pretty amazing legato here. So let's open legato O's here and let's play them back. And you would be surprised because the singers are not really singing like full, you know, power because with an O interval, it's, it's always difficult. Instead, they did this. I mean, that sounds really alive. Okay, so I don't want to go through all of the articulations. Let's check out the women here and let's check out the legato as here and play a little bit for you. Slipped off the keys. Sounds amazing. Okay, let's listen to one legato hmm or m patch here for a second. Very cool. Okay, so of course we have lots of more patches here, but I just want to pay uh, attention a little bit more to the multi-patches and where I personally think uh, is the heart of the library and what I personally will use most, of course, uh, legato articulations whenever needed. Uh, but uh, what, what I think is the, the, the really the heart of the library are the traditional syllables here, the energetic syllables and the slow syllables. Uh, also, additionally, you have a traditional Additional articulation um, patch which is basically a key switch patch that gives you the option to play through all of these legato or sustain and staccato intervals with um, key switches so let's load the traditional syllables here for a second and then let's listen to how these sound okay so I'm trying my best here
So you already heard the, uh, the energetic syllables. So the traditional syllables are a little bit more, let's say, tamed and not, um, you know, what you would use, let's say, in an intense trailer environment or a trailer track. So let's listen to the slow syllables here for a second. And please pay attention to what uh, is happening when I play several notes during a chord. So this is beautiful. So the syllable only changes when, um, you know, I take my hands off the keyboard completely and trigger a new uh, chord. So the, the moment I'm still holding other notes here, uh, it still stays at the same. So the next syllable would be uh, two. I just have to go closer to the screen. <laughs> I forgot my glasses. So oh, we stay at the me. And then I take off my hands and it switches over. Beautiful. So let's load uh, again the main energetic syllables here that you've already heard in my track here. And let's talk a little bit more of the stuff that is going on in the GUI. Okay, so first thing you can see, we have three different mixes here. We have the CLC mix. If you want to have more details on all of these things, uh, all I can say is that Scott Smith mixed really cool projects check out the audio imperial website you find more info on this so let's listen to how the c l c mix sounds like then the mdn mix here and Scott Smith mix. Should be pretty obvious what I'm using in the future. So Scott Smith mix all the way for me here. And uh, next thing, what I want to talk about, as I already mentioned previously in the video, is that when you play these syllables here, They are pretty much flowing already. So unless you really, I mean, to be honest, there is really no way or no reason why you should make this sound like words. The most important thing is always that a choir sounds homogenic and that it sounds, you know, in the flow with the rest of the track and that it sounds good nobody unless of course like an opera the the choir or vocals are the center and the lyrics are the center of the production just in case i mean if you if you creating the main theme of a video game soundtrack or you just write production music or trailer music no one cares about the lyrics of a of a choir you know, the most important thing is that it sounds good. So last but not least, let's take a look at the advanced tab. You have way more stuff that you can do here. You can have uh, all these individual settings uh, for, for, for the microphones. You can pick between room and hall. You can change the pre-delay, the time. Uh, for the reverb, the amount. Of course, over here, uh, you have this big window where you can change and rearrange 
the syllables that you want to have played back but as i said before in my opinion it's not really necessary because the default uh, order of the syllables already sound really great uh, over here you have the typical stuff for the dynamics the dynamic range the expression and the sample star just in case if you want to have the same sample star as all the other uh, nucleus uh, or other audio imperia libraries in general because they applied this um, the sample start of minus 125 milliseconds to all libraries. You can do that here by just moving the slider all the way or the knob all the way to the left. Uh, I left mine at minus 80. I don't care too much about having it all precisely like this. Most important thing to me is that the entire flag uh, track flows. And um, yeah, so that's the most important for me. So I manually shift stuff. Sometimes I use minus track delay uh, inside Studio One whatever, you know, lights my candle, whatever sounds good, always the most important thing for me is does the track flow or not. And uh, yeah, okay, so the last thing here, we have also a release control where you can control the releases of the, of the samples. What you play sometimes is a little bit better to turn them higher or lower, um, depending on what you want. Okay, I mean, to sum it up, uh, Chorus is really like an all-rounder, uh, absolutely amazing sounding choir library. I mean, it doesn't matter if you really go for that slow, uh, kind of like lamenting or dreamy choir stuff, no matter if you just work more in, let's say, the traditional setting, um, you know, puristic or traditional sounding orchestra and choir, or if you had for, you know, hybrid productions, um, you know, bang in the face trailer productions that need like really energetic and powerful syllables it's all there so there is no you know question left it's it's simply all there this is just great job audio imperia i don't know what to say else thanks for watching this video and if you want more information make sure to check out the audio imperia page i left the link in the video description below and yeah, as always, thank you so much for checking out this video and see you on my next one. Bye.